He was a man for all seasons. And I'll say that on a couple of levels. Uh, if you read Dan Verdon's book about Eastern football, you go in and says, what was Bob's favorite football movie? And it was Remember the Titans. And he you know, gave a few moments about why he liked Remember the Titans. But his favorite movie of all time was A Man for All Seasons, the film that won the Academy Award back in 66 with Paul Schofield and Robert Shaw about the life of Thomas More, who had everything. He was the second most powerful man in England. And Henry VIII starts changing everything, and Thomas More does not agree. And it's this internal struggle of conscience. Bob Spoo identified with being true to your conscience and, and what you believed in, what you had been raised with, what were your values. And he used that throughout his life. Okay, it's like, what do you sell your soul for? And one of the, the lines in that movie is about one of his son-in-law. His son-in-law basically turned him in to be, um, become head man of Wales. And Thomas More goes up to him after the trial that condemns him and says, Robert, Robert, I still can't believe you did all this to gain Wales, you know? And I die the king's good servant, but God's first. That's what Bob Spoo tried to live throughout his life. And it reflected in everything he did. Um, I also found it funny that Henry VIII in that movie was Robert Shaw. To me, Robert Shaw was a dead ringer for Bob, especially when he was the assassin in the Bond film uh, from Russia with Love. I would see that. I said, it's Bob Spoo running amok in Europe, killing everybody. <laughs> okay, fine. But that was funny that, you, you know, it was, a, it was a film with someone I thought resembled him significantly that also became his moral compass. A couple of men, a lot of memories with Coach Spoo, but when we got married, my wife and I got married in 1994 uh, in Terre Haute, which is only, you know, uh, 45, 50 minutes from um, from Charleston, and he made him and Mrs. Boo made that trip over. And 45 minutes before the wedding started, I looked out in the church. There was four or five people um, there, you know, guests there. And Coach Boo and Mrs. Boo was 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 two of the five guests, and that just meant a lot to me. Um, I, I just never forget looking at my brother, who was my best man, saying, "Man, Coach Boo's already here," and, he's, and that just did wonders for me and then when he went into the uh, Hall of Fame at Eastern there I made the trip to, to go watch and go in and um, came off the field after they held the ceremony and you know everybody's giving them hugs and congratulating them taking pictures with them and I remember he just looked at me and he grabbed me by the face and he says I don't think I've ever told you this but he goes I am so proud of you for the man that you've become and the father that you've become and the husband that you've become and that just um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, floodgates of tears coming out because to hear that from your head coach, it's all you want. And that's all you, and, and really, you know, I, I, I could go on the rest of my life and, and have closure and, and did have closure, you know, when he passed away that, um, you know, I know I made him proud and that's all, that's really all I cared about. He was one of those who believes not everything deserves a response or he would be very minimal about it. Okay. Bob Spoo was, was stoic and quiet and probably strategic in that way. He never would show his hand in many, many situations. All right. Uh, suffered his crosses silently and internalized a lot of things. Okay. But you never saw him wearing his disappointments on his sleeve. He kept them to himself and work them out in his mind in that. Um, but when you were his friend, extremely loyal, comfortable with you, uh, you knew how much loyalty meant to him and thus how much family meant to him. Uh, he had very few exquisite tastes, if you will. He was extremely simple, simple practical, if you will, 
looked at everything quietly, made decisions. But again, he was a neighborhood guy. You would go by the Spoo house and see him mowing his lawn. He didn't have anybody else doing it. It was no Bob after getting everything else done in the course of the day, okay? Um, that's, that's really, if you went up to Bob and asked him for some sort of long explanation of something you threw to him, you might get a sentence or two, you know? And uh, that meant, among other things, when Bob Spoo did say something and did offer it, it was like the old E.F. Hutton commercial, when Bob Spoo talks, people listen. You know, now you knew he was invested in something he wanted you to know. And that was Bob on that level. I just think that thing of um, inspiring and trying to inspire by a little, uh, partly by how you do things, you know, and so, you know, that work ethic, that um, humility, um, that graciousness that he would have towards people um, and trying to just live out and embody those things. Um, I think those are the, the some of the biggest things that I, I try to do and the work that I do here in, at Urbandale High School. And, um, uh, you know, the, the humility, again, I, I feel like he was a guy that was that way as well and trying trying to be that way in, in the way that I lead and I do work. Um, I do work with our team here. Um, and. Uh, you know, just really in seeing the best in people and in empowering people to do the work that they are brought on to do. So, um, you know, th those are a few of the things that I think about. Like I said, it does, for me now, it doesn't translate to the football field, but, you know, just in the, the world of, of work. Um, and just the, you know, his other, just, this, just, you know, working hard and, and every day, you know, I always think of Coach Boo as a lunch pail kind of guy, grab your lunch pail and get to work. And, uh, um, yeah, so those are a few of those things. He was very interested in the players off the field as well as on. Um, he wanted them to graduate, wanted them to do well in the classroom. If there were issues where they weren't going to class or something like that, that was unacceptable. He took care of that. He, he cared about them as people. I often felt like, particularly late in his career, he was almost like their grandfather uh, to a lot of those players. Age-wise, that was the case, but I think they had very warm relationships with him as well. Tremendously respected in the business, other coaches, you know, tremendous respect, um, just, um, you know, he just, just high character, lots of class is how I would describe him. And I think we all, in our own way, um, with our own little twist on things, we wanted to conform, you know, we wanted that personality of Coach Fu. Uh, I think as so many of us admired him um, and how he was able to be so successful so stern, but at the same time, be fair, you know, and, and, and treat you like a human being. Because all too often, you know, you hear of head coaches, um, you know, just not not caring about the person, you know. And Coach Boo cared about the person first and foremost, the, then the student athlete, then, then the football player. So he, he had a hierarchy uh, that he wanted uh, to see his players. And, you know, I think a lot of us lived up to that. I really do.